Gathering vast amounts of public data is necessary to get valuable business insights or improve your pricing and marketing strategies. To do it, you must access thousands or even millions of web pages and do it fast since you want to save as much time as possible to analyze gathered data and make important decisions. I'm Iveta, and after this tutorial, you'll know how to speed up your web scraping processes and save time for things that matter the most, making data-driven decisions. So, what slows down web scraping? There are several reasons why web scraping can be slow, including network bottleneck, I.O. bottleneck, CPU-bound bottleneck, Let's start by explaining network bottlenecks. They are among the most common issues for any web scraping project. Simply put, transmitting a request to the web server takes time. Once the request is received, the web server will send a response, which again causes a delay. For instance, if sending a request and receiving the response takes a second, browsing a few pages will seem very fast. But if you run a piece of web scraping code that has to send requests to thousands of pages, this will app add up to almost three hours, which no longer seems that quick. Of course, the network bottleneck is only one of the factors that can slow down the process. Web scraping is impossible without having code that initiates request sending, which requires CPU, I.O. or other computer resources. Your web scraping code won't just send and receive requests, but will also interact with the data. At this point, the scraping can also run into I.O. bottlenecks. I.O. bottleneck is an issue that relates to a system's input output performance and its peripherals, such as disk drives, network interface, etc. Any program dependent on the input output system, for example, reading and writing data, copying files, downloading files, is an I.O. bound program, and the delays are thus called I.O. bound delays. The other scenario is when a program is CPU bound. As the name suggests, in this case, the code execution speed depends on the CPU, which refers to the central processing unit of a computing device. A slower CPU would mean slower code execution. So, how to speed up web scraping in Python? A few possible approaches that can help increase the scraping speed are multiprocessing, multithreading, asynchronous programming with Asyncio. But before we start delving deeper into each approach, let's take a look at an optimized code example so we can compare it after optimizing the code. For this example, we'll scrape 1000 books from books.toscrape.com, a dummy online bookstore that is perfect for learning. But first, let's start with necessary preparations. The first step is to extract all 1000 links of the books and store them in a CSV file. You'll need to install requests and beautiful SOO packages for this code to work. Execute the script to create the links.csv file. The fetch links function retrieves all the links, and refresh links stores the output in a file. We skipped sending the user agent as this is a test site, but you can do so easily using the requests library. Now that we've prepared for the web scraping process, let's take a look at how long it takes for an optimized code to execute our task. We've already installed the request library to gather 1000s of URLs from the books.toscrape.com website. It will also be needed for extracting book titles from 1000 URLs, as well as CSV and RE modules, which come automatically with Python. We, can, we also included the time module to determine how long it takes to execute our task it will be easier to compare the results with the optimized scripts later. To keep things simple, you should use regular expressions to extract the title elements of the page. Note the getLinks function that loads the URLs we saved in the previous step.
The code without optimization took around 126 seconds. Now let's try three different approaches, multiprocessing, multithreading, and async here to check if we can make the code work faster. Multiprocessing, as the name suggests, mean, means utilizing more than one processor core. Nowadays, it's hard to find a single core CPU. You can write code that takes advantage of all cores using the multiprocessing module, which is included in the Python standard library. For example, if you have an eight core CPU, you can essentially write code that splits the task into eight different processes where each process runs in a separate CPU core. Note that this approach is more suitable when the bottleneck is CPU or the code is CPU bound. You'll still see some improvements in our case though. So the first step is to import pool and CPU count from the multiprocessing module. The other change is required in both getResponse and main functions. The most critical line of the code is where we create a pool. Note that we are using the CPU count function to dynamically get the count of CPU cores. It ensures that this code runs on every machine without any change. In this example, the execution time was around 49 seconds. It's a better result compared to an unoptimized code where the same process took around 126 seconds. Still, as expected, it's a slight improvement. As we mentioned, multiprocessing is more suitable when the code is CPU bound. Our code is IO bound, thus we can improve the performance of this code more with other methods. Multithreading is another solution to optimize your web scraping code. Simply put, a thread is a separate flow of execution. Operating systems typically create hundreds of threads and switch the CPU time among them. The switching process is so fast that you can get the illusion of multitasking. It cannot be customized because the CPU controls the switching. Using the concurrent.futures module of Python will help you customize how many threads you create to optimize the code. There is only one huge warning. Managing threads can become messy and error-prone as the code becomes more complex. To change our code in order to utilize multithreading, minimal changes are needed. First, import thread pool executor. Next, instead of creating a pool, you need to create a thread pool executor. know that you must specify max workers. This number will depend on the complexity of the code. However, choosing a too high number can overload your code, so you must be careful. This script execution was completed in 7.02 seconds. For reference, the unoptimized code took around 126 seconds. This is a massive improvement. Asynchronous coding using the Asyncio model is essentially threading where the code controls the content switching. It also makes coding more effortless and less error-prone. Specifically, for web scraping projects, it's the most suitable approach. This approach requires quite a lot of changes in our code. First, the request library won't work. Instead, you should use the IOHttp library for web scraping in Python. This requires a separate installation. Next, import asyncio and IOHttp modules. The getResponse function now needs to change to a coroutine. Also, you have to use the same session for every execution. Optionally, you can send the user agent if needed. Note the use of async and await keywords. The most significant changes are supposed to be made in the main function. First, it needs to change to a coroutine. Next, you need to use IOHttp.client session to create the session object. Most importantly, you'll need to create tasks for all the links. Finally, all the tasks will be sent to an event loop using the asyncio.gather method. Lastly, to run the main coroutine, you need to use the asyncio.run main function. As you can see, the execution time is 15.61 seconds. The asyncio approach, as expected, also showed great results compared to an optimized script. Of course, this approach requires an entirely new way of thinking. If you have experience with async weight in any programming language, it won't be hard for you to use this approach for your web scraping jobs. And that's it. These are the three methods, multiprocessing, multithreading, and asynchronous programming with asyncio to make your web scraping code work faster. You can choose any approach that suits your use case best. 
If you have any questions about web scraping or any other topic, write to us at hello at oxilabs.io or leave us a comment below. Also, if this video was helpful, press the like button and share it on social media. Thanks for watching and see you in other videos.